five is more of a saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Right, right, right. Maybe a drywall saw, actually. Maybe there's no knife involved at all. Mm -hmm. I haven't done any drywall yet. I it's have holes in my it's very stuff. satisfying to do drywall. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. It goes on very fast. I mean, I've done putty, but I haven't done the, the, the drywall. No, no, no. You, the mud and tape, that's impossible and definitely hire a professional. Mm -hmm. But to slap on the like the sheets, oh yeah, that's really really fun. You oh. just scar it with a knife wherever like an exacto knife, and then oh, it and just, just breaks like, along there, and it's, it's it's great. But very difficult, I think, to do the mud and tape. Yeah, I I tried my first hand at that on my bathroom ceiling. Mm, oh, ceilings that's a hard, are hard. Yeah, yeah it was such it was not such only a thing. Michelangeloing it, but it's also <laughs> yeah. when you can see the, yeah. the uh, things. Is, and well, it really was a Michelangelo because uh, my um step ladder is a little too short for me <laughs> so like, what happened to your real ladder uh, well i didn't have a real ladder a step ladder joke just a step ladder well it's hard with the real ladder because then you're up against the walls the whole time you need a taller yeah. step ladder well it's also like there's a big hole for a vent right in my shower mm. and my vent was broken i wanted to replace it right and they don't make vents of that size anymore oh, so i had I to like get a smaller one good. so i had to patch you're, the you're hole good. Ready for a uh, toolbox out? Yes, please. Yeah, the drylers use like this bench. They don't even use step ladders. They use these weird, like, looks like a sawhorse kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Scaffold around kind of thing, yeah. Scaffoldy sawhorse. Way more thing. stable. I don't know if that would have fit in my bathroom. <laughs> but the key is apparently to just use like a really flat, flat paint. Mm -hmm. And they don't see all the little errors. Or textured ceiling. My yeah, ceiling just, is textured, just, so that's how I got away with it. Yeah, just put more popcorn ceiling on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Put a painting up actual, there. Actual popcorn. <laughs> I don't have popcorn in the bathroom, but it's like that um, knockback texture. Oh, yeah. Oh, what yeah. is that called? That's, uh, I don't know. So I got another task for you if you're up for it before we yep. land here. The uh, hose is flapping in the breeze. Oh. Let's see if I can actually see it even. We might need the uh, reverso bubble action. Let's see if I can get it. Probably on four. Wrong two. Wrong three. Yeah. It's like down in the armpit there. Oh. I'd like to get that stuck back on the magnet so it doesn't fly around during recovery. We can do that later if you want. How do we get all the way in there? Difficultly. <laughs> <laughs> We can do the cable first. After this cable, are we coming up? Yeah, let me do just do a final check, but I'm pretty sure you're done. Oh, you want to confirm position? Um, position and then if cable in position, then up? Yeah. Okay, great. Locate the connector, platform, remove. Yeah, let's do the hose later. Okay. Do it on recovery. Connect just I just want it on the loose on the interface, yeah. you know? Yeah, understood. So for this cable, uh, you know the little mess, a uh, little micro knot there. You want us to grab that and kind of nuzzle it this way, or do you have staples? You, or we unfortunately we don't have any staples. But if you can land, or whatever you want to do, and land just get your arm corner, behind it, put the arm and just yeah, and just like kind of smear it this way. I yep. don't need to grab it. Just shuffle it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, obviously, yeah, not with the manipulator gripper, but just right, kind of yeah. scrape it back. Yeah. Yeah. There's a cool trick we've used is. Uh, Leave the jaws open, grab the cable and turn. You can fix stuff up that way. On it, yeah. Hey Josh. Hi. I'm gonna land and I'm gonna create up but uh just set stand by. I don't know. I'm gonna square up. Seismol seismologist? I'm gonna square up so you get a heading as well. Yep, not like that I won't. Hey. Not too much, you know, just oh, enjoying the time. That's almost a perfect heading there. Mm -hmm. No, it's not, Dirk. No, you moved since. <laughs> there. Just wait. No, no time, time to wait. So. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> Scooch. Go. Okay, just, who's, who's driving this thing? <laughs> Josh and I already traded out, I promise. That's it. That's probably pretty good. Sure. Okay, if we can get that heading in position as a final. Three, two, the pos position three, wouldn't two, have changed. Three, it looks like. So okay, just heading is fine. Uh, you works. can do arm stuff you? at, your, at your leisure. Oh, you need the position. Okay, so we need a position now. 
Your mic's off, I think. Sorry about that. Your position is 48.598887 degrees north. So do you want that repeated? She's just setting up here. Are you so, ready? Ready? Ready now, go ahead. Okay, please. so 48.598889 degrees north. And then 127. Point zero seven nine five two degrees west, and our heading is three two three. Okay. Pretty bouncy. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, this chair is so warm. Yeah, it's a hot seat for sure. This seems to be impossible. It's not. It's not? All right. Just got that little wuzzle in it. Hey, Dirk. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, first of all, I don't need permission to speak. Just know my niece and nephew is watching. <laughs> 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 Take it easy on me. <laughs> uh, do we have another personnel transfer at some point with uh, if, if you would be so lucky. Hey, no, this is it. No, I was, I just, yeah, no, that's good news. I just wanted to. No, we're, we're, curious. we're no longer going in pilotage waters till the very end of the cruise. You want some pan over anything there, Dave? Um, I want to know if we, we need to come everything right off. Yeah. I think, uh, or is that okay? I think that's okay. I don't, I, yeah. This isn't a strict requirement, it was just where it was sitting. I think you're probably fine. Okay. Um, let me see the arm a sec then, Josh, please. Uh, that's... I've uh, got too much more of that. That's it. Cheers. Good enough. Now, we got to get the suction hoses hanging down here. Have you heard of that yet? Yes. Okay. Sorry, is that our next Bye. thing or not? Or does Dirk has more for us? Hey, Dirk. Hang on. Hanging. <laughs> Go ahead. I sh I'll call you Dive Chief. Um, dive Good. Chief. Roger. Pilot. <laughs> yes, Pilot. <laughs> <laughs> is there any more to do on this dive for you guys? Uh, this is the end of my checklist. Uh, we've already, if on the way before recovery, if we can follow the cable back to the tilt meter and then we can recover. Okay. Would you like... We'll let's, do. Let's do, all, do that first and then we'll deal with the. Okay, the Roger. Holes, yeah. Do I know how to do that? Is the question. Um. <coughs> yeah, she's light. Follow the cable, Dirk. On the way. Following. Do you want to make points or anything? or? Uh, no, we'll just get a. Visual is fine. It's a little close. That didn't work. Yeah. Auto, auto down. I don't know. Hold on. But I totally did that on purpose. Hey, that's why it didn't work. Uh, up is down and down is up. No, uh, pan and tilt instead of the. Uh, they shouldn't be the same. Yeah, I've gone for that a couple of times myself. Yeah. It'll take a while. Actually, I got the up down pretty good, but the. The pan tilts one that's getting me. Oh well. We have a question that came in for our ROV pilots. Uh, someone was asking why the arms might be so bouncy. <laughs> oh, good question. Because they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, 
That was a tough one at the end of the ship. Uh, let's see. Because I believe the uh, connector, the electrical connector that goes into the into the arm itself that uh, gives us control over it has a little bit of water or leakage into it somewhere mm -hmm. um, and is causing the manipulator to just be a little bit shaky um, but it's not really enough to uh, to justify basically fixing it or opening up a whole lot of stuff just to get into. All right. So we so will work with it as is. Yeah, once it's on board. Yeah, and uh, these manipulators are not brand new. They've been used for a long, long time. Just like anything, um, you know, a little wear will make them, make them shaky as well. But it is incredible that they've lasted uh, about at least 20, 20 years. years. Yeah. Uh, Dirk? Yeah, that's good. That's it, that's all? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Where are you along this track here? Yeah, that's probably fine. Roger. Okay, <coughs> before we come up, we gotta deal with a uh, hose situation. It's gonna go away from everything. So what is this attached to? This is attached to an instrument called a tilt meter and it's uh, about a meter long and you press it into the sediment What's that do? That's for the so I don't know if this is where the tilt meter actually sits I think it's actually a little bit more to the north but um, this is where the cable kind of got buried along the way okay. over the years and then what the other instrument or the platform is is a battery pack and a bottom pressure recorder so it also measures pressure but it also has a battery pack and a, and a logger so this is like an autonomous instrument arrangement and then what we do we just swap the logger so that uh, we don't have to touch the tilt meter so we can keep the tilt meter just plug it into a new battery new logger and then it will keep logging for another I think two years so oh, wow. long they last and so the only way to get the data is to return here and collect the logger yeah because this is not actually connected to our uh, cabled observatory but it is a site of interest so it's just I guess to lay a cable just for this one instrument in the site isn't like, either worthwhile or feasible. So then we kind of fill the gap with an autonomous instrument. Makes sense. But there are a lot of other tilt meter BPRs on the network as well, but they're cabled. So we'll get the, when we get this platform back on deck, one of our engineers will download the data and see if it's still working or not could be that the instrument we plugged in doesn't work. We'll find out once we look at the data. Okay. Trevor seemed to think it was possible.
can the box push it out? Or is it just just out well, too far? Can the other arm reach that way? No. I don't think so. It's just because it's on the opposite side. I thought it might be able to slew far enough over. But I've also haven't seen that arm move very often, so. Is the porch all the way out? Now can you grab it? Uh, I thought it would catch and just bring it out a little bit. Yeah. That's all the way in anyway. Oh. Maybe if you're in position and you bring it out, you can just like snatch it? Yeah, it's tied with a bungee. Yeah. We're just worried that it'll float around on recovery. Well, we might, maybe you can like move the craft so that it's pinning it.
Oh, be nice if that. I know, right? It's the most inconvenient spot. Um, well, if you put on the, s the gentler grip force, it should be okay. Oh, that's so close. Got it. There. Oh. oh look, it just doesn't magnetize. I couldn't get it to like it's almost flat. Yeah. That's a lot. Magnets don't work. Yeah, if it's that close to a metal plate, it should just stick.
to see that finger. Come on. Get away. Can we just hold it there at the five, or or if the seven? Pardon? Oh, you can't just hold it with a manip. I'm just wondering if those. That was nice. <laughs> Just like that, Josh. <laughs> now stick on the plate. It really doesn't want to. Yeah, don't let go of it. Yeah. The magnet's not magnetizing. See, <laughs> Trevor just had a look at it. The animal <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, Trevor, as long as Trevor's had my back on, yeah. give you the shoulder rub, and I'll pet. Um, come up. What's that? Uh, can you turn your combs back on? Because we can't hear you back here. Coming up? Yeah, we're good to come up, yep. Transecting? No transect. Yeah. Just sure can. 60, minutes, 60 meters a minute. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I gotta stretch out that way. Sure. Okay. Huh? Take your you take your wraps out. Mm -hmm. yeah, take your wraps out. Okay, I don't want all these. Why do you have so many controls? Give me all the controls. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Can I miss a button? No. We'll float out of there then. If we're so light. There we go.
Trevor. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, you can, uh, yep, Roger. Now Atlanta's facing, Atlanta's facing the wrong direction. Oh, I see. Uh, you got on heading off and I'm pulling it now, right? Roger, mm -hmm. Roger. I wish we could clear the lines, but... All clear these, the witch? All these green lines. Yeah, the trail. Come on, Megan. Well, I, I asked about it. Apparently it doesn't allow you to do that. I guess I'm coming up. Slowly. All right. Going off Ready bottom. Up, you want to wait? Uh, you mean that uh, the uh, turns there? Oh. I can't, I don't know. Is that what he wants? I can't remember. If that's what you remember, I'll go for it. Trevor, Delta zero all the way up. Stretch out for zero. No wraps. No wraps, baby. Don't tell me what to do. Coming up. Okay. I'm coming up. Pretty slow, but I am coming up. Okay, so you want me to come full up? Okay, I'm going to start coming full up. Let's see. Where's the utility? Bink. Okay, vertical velocity, 20 meters a minute. Six meter delta. Okay, there we go. Roger. Okay, I got stick lock on forward. I'm coming full up. Um, as soon as it pulls Argus tight, there should be no turns left. Mm -hmm. 
Who's our um, science person over there, back there? Oh, I see a hat. Mm. We've got Dirk back here, but he is in conversation. No, I met you. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, fellow. That's Hi. me. Yes. Sorry. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Fantastic. Good. Mm. How you doing, Megan? Good. Where do you guys live? Where are you from? I live in Hawaii. Okay, never mind. I don't want to talk to you. What? <laughs> Do you live in Hawaii too? No, I live in California. That's slightly better from <laughs> from my perspective. Better slash worse. Well, or worse. Yeah, I'm just live? jealous. Not somewhere like that. <laughs> I live in Vancouver. Oh, okay. Vancouver's nice. I have no issues with Vancouver. <laughs> so you didn't have to travel very far to get here. No, I certainly did not. <laughs> So it looks like we should be on deck at what, 3.30? Uh, sure, I 25 so meters a minute. So I, three o'clock? That's, that's a lot of math. <laughs> 100 meters every four minutes. Therefore, 400, no, no, it's too much, can't do it. Where in California? Uh, Southern California, Orange County area. Cool, I just, um, was doing a telemetry install on a sub in Ventura. Okay, yeah, this. I grew up in Ventura area. Oh, really nice. Yeah. It is nice, so. it's, it's quiet. Yes. It's not too far from LA. I think three o'clock. Three o'clock. Currently we're at about 2,300-ish meters. Roger. Bridge nav. Okay. Good afternoon. I uh, just wanted to let you know that we have come off bottom and we expect to be recovering around 3 o'clock. Of course, yeah, I'll let you know. No problem. Oh, you mean for the time? Yeah, I can have an issue at a uh, thousand meters. It's no big deal. <laughs> a personal issue. <laughs> what was your calculation? Uh, about three o'clock. That's too early. Not a hundred minutes sounds about right. It's too early. Yeah, we're off at three. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Can you make it three thirty? Well, can you slow it? Our descent down, then sure. Shh, don't say it over the comms. <laughs> Come on. Again. Yeah. Um, that's what I was told that we were doing 25 up. <coughs> I lied. Yeah, I'm sorry, no I meant five. Five up. <laughs> That's a precision stick. 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 Da, 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 da. What do you do when you're not here? Cool. 
So what does that mean? What do you what do you Cool. Oh, Megan, turn on your mic. I think everyone would want to hear this. That's you know, true. You know Michelle Taylor then? Uh, no, I don't know her. No? Or Louise Alcock? Who are they with? Louise's University of Galway. Been there forever. Oh, okay. Michelle was Oxford. I'm yeah, we sure haven't had any um, we don't mingle collaboration with, with uh, the UK. Well, yeah. We usually collaborate with uh, Ambari. We use their annotation software. I'm amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so, Andrea? Andrea Quattrini? Quattrini? Yeah. yeah. I know her well. Yeah. yeah, I did a couple of trips for her. Over off with the Irish Marine Institute. Mm hmm. The Whitard Canyon. What'd you find there? Black corals at 3,000 meters. <laughs> yeah. Black coral are really it's cool. It was quite the thing, apparently. Mm-hmm. I bet. Oh, well, Louise was going nuts. <laughs> I've done a little bit of work in the Atlantic, but only on the east coast of the U.S. Okay. And a little bit of Canada. We were surveying the um, New England sea mounts and canyons. Yeah. But mainly my work is uh, North Pacific sea mounts. Yeah, I spent a lot of time out in the CCZ. Oh yeah, yeah. I've done a trip to the CCZ. That was actually my first ROV cruise as a uh, data manager, navigator person for the ROV Lu'ukai. Okay. Do you find that having that biology background helps you in your navigator position? I really like having the power to go see the things I want to see. So yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, that looks interesting. Let's go over there. Well, it really helps for annotating, uh, having somebody who knows what to look for. So um, I am very familiar with a lot of the animals at these depths that we're surveying. So. I recognize when there's something new that we want to go and look at, um, what we what's important to zoom on to get good identification for video annotation. And so having this background really does help um, create good data products. Yeah, I thought it was very interesting having you tell us what all the different squids and All the different squids that we saw. Yes, from last night. We'll probably see a bunch of them again um, as we're approaching uh, that that layer over at 500 meters. Mm -hmm. But it is daytime now, and we have had the wire in in the water, so we're actually disturbing that uh, scattering layer. So we might not see as many because we were descending through them; they didn't have enough time to like Get scatter away from us. Yeah. But the wire will disturb them, and so they usually avoid the ROV. At least in my experience, you actually, if you watch the fish finder, you can kind of see how it avoids the ROV as we move through that, that water column. That makes sense. We did see a lot of fish earlier today when we were descending. Yeah, yeah, it was actually pretty amazing. I've never seen that many mctopids just sort of zooming about, but this is a very productive area. So you'd expect to see a lot more life in the water column. Sure. All right, maybe here's something for our ROV pilots. Uh, what is your favorite nickname for a tool on her? Ooh, well, I don't know is my favorite because... That's quite a personal question. It is a personal <laughs> question. It comes from that, that thing with the 
four bolts in it on the porch there, and it's got black and then a little piece of yellow signal, like then black. Looking thing. And we use that for Ocean Networks Canada to uh, take off their dusk dummy plugs. Mm -hmm. And that was invented a few years ago. I think it was invented by Dirk. And we call it the Fletcher because it's named after Dirk's dog. <laughs> so that's probably favorite nickname. I don't know if we can say the other nicknames. Yeah, yeah some of them are not PC. Oh, do we have a nickname for the suction sampler? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> no. Okay. I like uh, the name for the left arm is Mongo. I can't yeah. remember why though. Do you know why? I can't remember. I can't no remember way. either. But I, I was told that we're not supposed to call it that anymore. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know, somebody had an issue. Oh, that's what that message came up. So a message came up yesterday. Oh, about how we're not supposed to be well, using that. Yeah, we're not supposed to call it its nickname. We have yeah. to call it the Magnum. Really? Mm -hmm. No. That's probably the manufacturer. Yeah. Listen, in ISE, that arm is 20 years old. Yeah. No, I'm not doing it. I know those guys. <laughs> One of my favorite nicknames for something that doesn't exist anymore was that uh, we had a little bump on the winch <laughs> um, and we called it the lumpus. <laughs> we had to slow down for the lumpus every time we came Lumpy. to that rap. <laughs> But with Herc's new, slightly new configuration with the new frame, I don't think everything has nicknames as it used to. No, what happened to the Tiki? Oh yeah, the Tiki's still on the old frame. We're supposed to be getting a new Tiki from the same guy who made the original Tiki, because he made them in pair. And so he has the other sister to the one that's on the old frame. Okay. There was a big discussion on whether or not it's kosher to switch tiki's um, over from one frame to another frame. Could that's be bad tough, juju. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. But it's not a whole new vehicle. It's not. The only thing really different is the frame mm -hmm. and some brackets. And I think all of the uh, hoses got swapped out too. Gotcha. It was fun to watch it come together. So like watch yeah, them strip everything. Cool, eh? Yeah, it was yeah. really cool. That's a big job. Yeah. The other feature that I really like now is the uh, the pull tabs for the Niskin bottles, those little balls, little balls with like the them. numbers. Yeah, I like that. Like lottery balls? Mm-hmm. Or like pool balls. <laughs> the loops were kind of confusing. Like, because they all kind of looped down together, and so in the pull loop, I wasn't always sure which one right. they pulled. Yeah. If you weren't like paying super attention, like even when I reviewed the video, I have to like slow it down, go back, like which one was it? I like to record that, even though it doesn't really pertain to information that I want to know, mm -hmm. the data that we collect does get submitted to the NOAA Deep Sea Coral Database, so anybody can go and review these annotations and use it for the research. So I try to collect as much information as possible so that you don't have to go back and rewatch the video ever again. Unless, you know, you want to. Because there's a, a really great clip that you want to collect, 
Uh, at least all that information is there. We do collect a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like that I never see. Oh yeah, and it goes to all sorts of different places, and so it's really all about like getting it all together in the database, so it's all connected. Gotcha. Yeah, that's tough. That's something Bari's pretty good at, I think. Mm -hmm. Hey, how would you feel about, uh, <sighs> Is that my only heading reference? I don't know, I use that one in ours all the time. I use it as a primary. <laughs> okay, so what do I do if I have auto heading on? Am I taking that off to click this? Probably, sure. Uh, yeah, 22, 21. Um, yeah, I can fix that, but I don't want to. Okay, I'm turning octans off. And this is where we're praying for... Okay, here we go. Hold your breath. Perk DC GF. If it doesn't go away within two resets, there's one that that's not it, probably ish, maybe. Roger. Well, we're already in it. Let's do one more. Okay. Roger. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no, it's fine. Never mind. There, that's why I was like, oh yeah, that clicked. Yeah. Took me a second. Even if you have DCM2 selected. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, yeah. Fantastical. Neato, gang. Would you like? Do you want me to speed up or slow down? Okay. I can speed up and we can get it on deck before they come on, or? Huh? Oh my, there's nobody left. So we rented um, uh, one of those Sprint Nav INS DVLs and the Ranger 2 system and a multi beam for that last job. So, you know, a bunch of stuff, but nothing, I don't know, it's rental. It's like a month-long rental. We're sending it back. I just got an email that said that the customs importation charges for rental for that rental equipment was $14,000. What? I was like, that's not right. They're, they're clearly the import people screwed up. That's rental equipment. I don't even know if you should have to pay any import charges. So, didn't you rent it from the States? Yeah. Didn't you use it in the States? No. Oh. On a, technically, yes, but on a... Well, yeah, we didn't really... Well, we, but, we, we, but we got it shipped to Canada and put it on the vehicle and tested. Oh, we didn't do No. 
But still, there may be import charges, but that's ridiculous. Yeah, it seems insane. It's if it, if you were buying it, okay, but it's so like they're it's like they thought we were buying the equipment and somebody sc screwed up paperwork. Oh well, somebody's gonna have to fix that or pay that. It sucks. To suck. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you could get them pierced and then... Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we can't hear you. Um, see, so do you want to see um, my high pack screen? Okay. Um, let's see. So that was the one that we were just at. So you can either, you want me to just read it to you? Oh yeah. Can do.
You're welcome. Just let me know whenever you need anything. Um, yeah, I can do that. Uh, the depth of that landing spot. Oh, come on. Zoom in. Oh, it's frozen. Come here. Looks like Whale fall dive? A whale fall would... Yeah. Yeah. You just come back and like survey it because of the, the way it decays over time. And certain animals come to it. Yeah. That would be really cool. Probably not. It's probably autonomous because getting the cable out there, you, unless you sank the whale on purpose at a specific location, which they do do that. Um, they have done it in the past where they've sunk in a whale and then watched the whole process. It's pretty wild. Like, there's like this specific polychaete worm that is only found at whale falls and they've never found it anywhere else. And it's just always at every whale fall and they don't know how it gets there. It just knows. But it's, yeah, it's really amazing. Um, a lot of these deep sea animals are scavengers and their response time is actually pretty quick. You see like shrimps and amphipods almost immediately after they smell it. Have you ever smelled a dead whale? Yeah, all <laughs> I can imagine it's really uh, stinky. <laughs> oh yeah, um, it's a unique smell. And, and the fun fact about this smell is that because it's in fat, it sticks to things. Oh. And so if you are interacting with dead whale bits you will smell like dead whale for quite a long time like oh. you can shower and the smell will still be there goodness um yeah so my senior year of college i volunteered a necropsy lab and i did a necropsy on a 42 foot bride's whale that was hit by a ship coming into tampa bay and they towed it ashore and we performed the necropsy. No one wanted to interact with me for about a week after that. Oh gosh. I had to throw away the clothes I was wearing because it didn't matter how many times I washed it. 
but it was a really cool experience. <laughs> um, and I knew that I ever really wanted to do that again. That's pretty cool. So I wasn't here for this earlier. Did we see a whale fall on this dive or is that an upcoming dive we have? Yeah, upcoming dive. We're going to go, yeah, the next one. Okay. So yeah, the next dive site's about 10 miles away from here. Mm -hmm. So after we recover, we're going to consult with the bridge on if we want to DP over there or if we want to turn on the main engines. Uh, but the goal is to have a quick turnaround and get back in the water as fast as possible. Sure. But that should be pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, I think I was talking to one of the scientists back here. He said that um, it's just bones at this point. Yeah, it's actually really fast uh, how quickly all the flesh gets taken away. Um, the number of animals that come to these um, whale falls is just extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And and they're quite voracious um, scavengers. So you, you see, you know, a bunch of different types of fishes um, that'll come along with uh, shrimps and crabs, amphipods, isopods, um, polychaete worms. Um, there are specific worms that only feed on the bones. And so uh, that's what it's surveying right now is eventually all the bones will be um, consumed. So the estimated launch time for our next dive is going to be 1900. Okay, great. Good information. Do you know how long of a dive that one's going to be? Um, I don't think we've received dive plans up here. Yeah, I have a picture of the, uh, the board. Oh, okay. Oh, the board. That's constantly changing. It's constantly changing. It okay. was updated to our recovery time. Of 1500. Uh, we might be a little bit late off that, but only by a few minutes. Right. It looks like we got 45 minutes till we get to the surface. Mm -hmm. So it should be right on time. Yeah. Yeah, board doesn't say how long our dive is. I know that the, the dive plan is always constantly changing um, just because. The science has to plan around all the different things that could be happening with their sure. equipment, what they're going to be able to load on the ROV. Um, so like they have, they have goals in mind of what they need to accomplish, but every minute of the dive is not planned out. Usually with these types of operations, it's, it takes the time that it takes. Sometimes things go really smooth and sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes you plug stuff in on the first try and sometimes it's silty and you have to wait for the silt to clear before you can continue with what you're doing. Yeah. You just never know um, what's going to happen and what the conditions are going to be like on any given day. Uh, every location has different tides and um, different currents on the bottom and that'll affect our ability to work there as well. So do we have consideration about currents and things like that before we dive or we just dive when we can? Um, absolutely. So before each dive, we um, consult the weather and make sure that our surface current, our wind speed, um, our swell are all within safe operation parameters to launch the vehicle. If the wind is too strong, we won't be able to launch. Um, if the swell is a little too big, launching will be uh, very challenging. So all of these things have to come together. Um, you know, we could have strong winds and still be able to launch, but if we have strong winds and a really large swell 
and all of the and the current is very strong and all of these forces are coming from different directions mm -hmm. that'll make launching impossible um, because the ship won't be able to hold position um, and we could have swinging on the vehicle as it's going in the water so we really consult all these forces for safety before we launch or recover the vehicle and so part of my job as a navigator is to watch this and watch the weather and up on the bridge they're also watching the weather to make sure that if something like a skull were to come through uh, we're prepared that's great i wouldn't think that's part of your job but it definitely makes sense yep so navigator is responsible to just monitor the whole situation. Um, we're figuring out where we need to be and where everybody needs to go, and kind of the go between between the bridge and the pilot and science, make sure we're getting everything accomplished and everybody's operating safely. And that's why we have so many screens. You know? <laughs> yeah. You gotta watch it all. Um, I also take it upon myself to watch the tether, make sure that it's staying where it needs to be. Everybody in the front row was always paying attention to the tether. Because mm -hmm. without it, then uh, we're not working. So we gotta make sure our tether is safe. Right. Yeah, that was a big challenge about yesterday's dive was it was so shallow and yeah. so silty. We were basically flying blind the whole time, which is why there wasn't a lot of communication. Yeah, definitely visibility was very bad yesterday. So do you rely completely on sonar? Because I know we have those screens all pulled up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have three different sonars. Um, and we do watch all of those screens all the time to make sure there isn't anything uh, unexpected. Uh, but we were mainly going on the lower mounted sonar because the packages that we were visiting uh, were only a couple meters off bottom. So our um, sonars that are mounted on top of the vehicle wouldn't be able to see them. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. They come in handy if you're on a mountain Mm -hmm. uh, or if there's pinnacles nearby, you can see those things. You don't want to run into anything. That'll the, the sonars will come in really handy when we visit the vent sites. Oh, okay, yeah. A lot of things going on all over, mm -hmm. all directions. Exactly. We don't want to run into any of the vents. Um, and there's a lot of them, so you have to kind of thread the needle of, with the vehicle.
Oh, I'm just zoomed out really far. Mm. Yeah. It's not responding. <laughs> yeah, you are close. No? Oh, yeah, you're over here. Why? Oh, okay. Yeah, this is right. Yeah, this this is wrong. Okay. I don't know why it's, uh, let's see. Everything is selected that is USB. There you go. Just took a second. I'm just trying to get the vehicle to center by the ship. That'll help at 500 meters we start screaming forward. Mm -hmm. so yeah, you'll get pulled. Yeah. That yellow icon is still on the dead reckoning solution. When you reset it to USBL, it moves the icon, but the icon's not tied to the USBL. So that is me moving to start when I was trying to. All right. Well, yeah. You know, I'm not crazy. I, I'm, dead wreck is not selected, though.
like is I don't see where it's getting the dead wreck. Okay. There, oh, okay. It is super sluggish. Slinky slug. Slinky slug. Yep. Great work. Faster than ever before. <laughs> Proud of you, Josh. Is that because we're so light and go up faster? It's funny how like you change the buoyancy. It doesn't really change how much speed you come up. Oh yeah. Or how fast you come up. To a point it does, obviously, but like 200 pounds different ballast, you can't tell the difference. It's hmm. really weird. Yeah, what was the solution you guys came up with because you were too floaty with the new uh, blocks? Lots of lead. We stole, uh, borrowed some lead off of uh, something in the UH boneyard. Oh, yeah, that's good. Take some of our random. We're, we're giving it back the way I wasn't allowed to take it. Uh. So it's on the vehicle right now, but we just recently got 940 pounds lead from Vancouver Island. So. Oh, okay, that's what those blocks are for. In the back of the truck. In the yeah. back of the truck. So those are to go on Herc and also on Atalanta so we can return your stuff. Fair. Though, to be fair, no one will ever touch that again, probably. Probably not. Well, it was really inconvenient because it was on some abandoned sled vehicle, mm -hmm. but I've been asked to not put it back on because it's <laughs> more useful off. That's fair. Oh, that was probably the, the <coughs> toad sonar thing right could be yeah, yeah. Uh, some kind of brownish metal coating on yeah, it yeah yeah that was like the the toad sonar array that used to belong to toad Barber. yeah that's always what i thought it was. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a little little lumpy little toad little toad sonar array now you're anti sandbagging i don't know what to believe hmm. <laughs> excuse me we coming up or what? Increase. Work for it. Faster, but careful, but more quickly, but speedier too. <laughs> <laughs> With the new frame, does the uh, the thruster get blocked by the starboard bio box still? Nope, not as much. It's, uh, yeah, it's angled a little bit more. Quite a bit more, actually. That's and good. also the shape of the cutout in the foam for the thrusters is not vertical. It's angled with the thruster, mm -hmm. which makes all kinds of sense to me. So does that mean it ascends faster? Yeah. Yeah, it does. So yeah, what is our max speed for ascension then? Well, right now we're going 24.9, nope, 23.9 meters a minute. So, I don't know, 24 is a pretty good number. I like that number. Before, if we got 18, we were happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's the same buoyancy. Generally, m most of the time it's within 100 pounds of the last vehicle is just the angle of the thrusters. Yeah, you don't have to do the the wagging back and forth thing. Totally, yeah. Thing of the past. Moving forward to a bright new future.
Look at that jelly. <laughs> what a squid. I feel like it just got colder in here. <laughs> I actually was a little warm earlier. It was warmer earlier, and I liked it. But I, I looked around Dave's and everyone was wearing heart. jackets. <laughs> yeah, I should have brought my jacket with me. I did this morning. I was like, it's gonna be cold outside, I'm gonna wear my jacket. <laughs> You're like, it's not cold. <laughs> it's, it's cold in here. I think it's cold everywhere. Okay, let's take a vote. Still what? Let's take a vote. I really like your big puppy jacket, Megan. I saw you wearing earlier. Oh, thanks. I really want one. I got it at the Uniqlo. Oh, I love Uniqlo. Yeah. They had like a sale right after Christmas. Oh, and I'm like, I don't really need a puffer jacket in Hawaii, but I do need one when I go to cold places on the mainland. Right. That makes sense. I like that as a hood. Mm-hmm. I couldn't say no to like 50% off. Oh, that is a good deal. It was great. Because those, those are like the micro down, so like they're pretty pricey. Yeah. Well, that was wild. Yeah, we should start to see more interesting things in the water column mm -hmm. very soon. All right, is, uh, is Mike on the radio or should I go find him? Around the radio. Tech nav. I was calling the deck. Hey, I just wanted to let you know we're about six hundred meters. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Megan, you got pretty close with your math. Looks like we're gonna get there right at three, like a minute before. I like to be correct. <laughs> yes.
I would have been off if we uh, kept coming up at 20 meters a minute, though. <laughs> yeah, but I think at that point we were kind of almost at 25, which made the math a little easier. Yeah. Yeah, after a while you get kind of a sense of how long it'll take to ascend depending on your depth. You don't have to do the math. You kind of are like, oh yeah, it's about a couple hours this, this time. Or Yeah, sure. If you're I shallow, you're like, oh, a few minutes. <laughs> like yesterday. No. Ha, ha, ha. 